All right, we are back. It is Friday. And as you know, on Friday, we do a Friday financial news wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well, man. I, I look forward to these every week. It allows me to step out of my daily grind and go, hey, you know what, what really happened this week? So thank you for the opportunity. I love it. So today is April the 29th, right? So we're basically here at the end of April. The month flew by. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, crazy. Very crazy. So let's get into it this week, PCE. What is PCE and what happened this week? Yeah, so PCE is important for us. It first of all stands for personal consumption expenditures. Why is it important? It is the favorite inflation gauge of the Federal Reserve, right? The Federal Reserve, as many people know now, really controls interest rates, at least the front end, which ultimately rolls through to mortgages. And as we have seen, mortgages have really exploded here in the last 10 to 12 weeks, up 200, 250 basis points. The Fed looks at PCE. Uh, there's really two. There's PCE headline and then core. Core came in at like 5.2%, so still a problem. Uh, the number that you and I and all of the consumers care about is the headline number because it includes food and energy. Uh, it was the highest since uh, January, I think, of 1982. So 40 years it's been since PCE has been this hot, hot, hot. So inflation is a problem. The Fed has to raise rates. They are behind. They know they're behind. Look for at least a 50 basis point move next week. Uh, not only is inflation a problem, but real incomes are going backwards, which means mom and dad sitting around the kitchen table paying bills are having a harder time, which means discretionary spending must fall. Uh, we are in for a hard landing or a recession. My guess is next year, and it's because inflation is hot. So PCE comes out once a month. This month, not a good number. Bad, bad, bad. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, obviously, we've been anticipating this, so it's not necessarily new news for a one rental at a time investor. Let's talk about the. Let's talk about tech. Tech earnings this last week. What did you see there? Yeah, tech earnings are interesting. Obviously, I live in the Silicon Valley. I've lived here for nearly fifty years, and um, it's always interesting. We have our own cycles in tech, and right now we are paying the price. Right, you first saw it with Peloton. Uh, DocuSign, you've seen it recently with Netflix, Amazon reported yesterday, Amazon stocks down 10 or 12% today. Uh, so again, we're starting to see a lot of tech earnings um, disappoint. And the reason that's important, because we talked to a lot of real estate agents in the Bay Area is obviously, a lot of your buyers use what's called RSUs, restricted stock, whatever, grants, basically, units, I think. And um, your buyers are going to have a lot less cash. So you're going to probably see them be more conservative. You're probably going to see buyer demand retreat, not only because of higher rates, but because their down payment disappeared or their financial cushion disappeared. Right. So for example, Teladoc, uh, their stock went down 48% in a day. If you were a real estate agent, and your buyer worked at Teladoc, I guarantee you uh, most of them are not buying, right? Their RSUs are worth half as much. It's, it's, it tech uh, is very, the Silicon Valley is reliant on tech stock uh, for a lot of this stuff. And Robinhood laying off 10% and their stock's down another 10%. It's just, um, it's just the reality of where we are and, and tech stocks are disappointing and multiples are coming in. And if you're an agent representing tech buyers and they're getting their stock from RSUs, you might want to double check on them because a lot of them have a lot less money today. Very interesting times. Very interesting times. So let's talk about the stock market in general. What did you see this week and kind of what is your feel for what happened this week in the stock market? Yeah. So the stock market is adjusting. We are entering a market where, you know, the stock, I actually interview a Wall Street guy every Monday at 930. And uh, we call the stock market dumb money and we call the bond market smart money, right? The, most people don't know this. The bond market dwarfs the stock market as far as uh, amount and, and liquidity and all of that. And uh, what we're seeing right now is the bond market or smart money got ahead. They're like, the Fed is serious. The Fed is serious. The dumb money for the longest time was like, no, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. It's starting to come around. And uh, I think the S&P or no, is the NASDAQ uh, or maybe it's the S&P also now are now in bear market territory down 20%. Uh, we are likely in for earnings. We, we've seen this week earnings um, forecasts come in. We're likely to see margin or a multiple compression. 
so the market's going to be a tough place to play uh, for the next couple of quarters. And the, the problem with the stock market coming in is it has what's called a wealth effect. The wealth effect means you feel richer when your stock or your 401k is up, You're fr- you spend more freely. But if your 401k becomes a 201k, as it has a couple of times in my investing career, you don't feel as rich and you're a lot less likely to spend and you're a lot less likely to sign up for that huge mortgage payment. So we've got to watch the stock market. I think it's in for a bear market. Uh, so be careful. Be careful. I like it. I like it. Good. But you really, it's interesting that, again, all these things that we're talking about, the anticipation you've, we, I feel like we've just been ahead of it and able to see it unfold. And so mm-hmm. I really hope that the one rental at a time community, our foundation builders, the mentorship, that everybody's really paying attention. So thank you, Michael. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about this week. I know next week there was this month in April, there was not a Fed meeting. Correct. We did see interest rates moving. We, we could see the bond market, mortgage-backed securities shifting, changing, mm-hmm. mortgage, 30-year mortgage obviously has moved tremendously. What's going to happen next week, Fed meeting? What are your thoughts about the Fed meeting next week? Yeah, so the Fed meeting, we're going to get the raise on on the 4th, May 4th. Um, May 4th be with you. I thought that's really funny. I, Star Wars Day. Anyways, uh, I digress. Uh, we're going to get a 50 basis point move. I think Powell has taught us uh, that he's going to tell the market what's coming, and he's told, him, told us the 50 basis point move is coming. More importantly, a 50 basis point move is coming in June. Uh, the good news for mortgages is a lot of that bump has already happened. Mortgages move first. Mortgage market moves first. Fed moves next. The mortgage move, again, bond market, right? Smart money, smart money moved first. Uh, so just because the Fed raises 50 and ultimately raises 50 in June, we should not expect mortgages to go up another 100 basis points. They'll move some but not a hundred basis point, right? It won't be one-to-one. The Fed is behind, right? Look at topic number one, PCE at six point something, highest since 1982. Mom and dad having less discretionary income. We have, a, we have an economy that needs a recession to work out the excess. And how they're going to do that is raising rates. Uh, we get our first 50 basis point move May 4th. And I think there's a good chance uh, maybe 20, 25% chance that we get a 75 basis point move in June. Uh, so it's not my base case, but it is now on the board. Inflation is that much of a problem. There you go. Anticipation, folks, anticipation. So let's talk about this. I know it came up in some of my conversations and some of the groups that I spend time with, masterminds, foundation builders. Um you know, it, it feels like some people in, in, interpret this as negative news. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to finish by you addressing the negative news, yeah. also talking about the housing slowdown mm-hmm. and maybe kind of thread those two together and, and really finish with how does the one rental at a time investor, how does our community, our friends, our family, people that are watching the show on a regular basis, weekly, daily, navigating the waters, give us your thoughts on the housing slowdown and tie it all together. Yeah, so I so it's pretty funny, right? Uh, over the last couple of weeks, as I have been proven more right, I've had some people reach out and call me a negative Nancy, which I I don't know. Depending on who says it, either makes me laugh or makes me mad, right? Uh, usually, what happens when somebody accuses me of that is uh, they have made a real estate decision that is working out poorly. Uh, they started to flip above the median or they try to do a burr project into a rising rate environment. All things that I've been talking about, you should not do. But some people uh, decide that they're smarter or want to gamble or whatever, <laughs> and they take the, take the move. And then it doesn't work out, and they got to blame someone. And you know they want to blame me because I've been consistently right about the housing slowdown, and it's like right in front of us now. I've had more people apologize to me in the last 30 days for calling me an idiot and stupid and don't know what I'm talking about than I have in the last year, all around the housing slowdown. Days on market are going to go up. Uh, Price drops are going to go up. Transactions are going to go down. Refinances are going to fall 75%. Everything I've been calling for, I've been calling for it early so you could prepare. Good times never last, bad times never last. If you don't prepare, you're going to get wrecked. 
if you were buying a flip above the median or over uh, your ARV is wrong on a Burr project, you are supposed to get smoked. I've been telling people early so they can prepare. I'm not about knowing, not doing deals. I'm about only doing great deals. And I've been doing this so long, I know market changes. Plenty of experts out there have been doing this five years, plenty of flippers, only five years, and they've only known one market, and that is the market bails them out. I have 20 some odd experiences in multiple cycles where if you don't pivot early, you get smoked. So I call my shots early. I do what I say. I, my people on my channel know I took money out when it was really cheap because I could, and I'm happy to sit on it. And it's proven to be a great idea. Uh, the biggest thing I want to say is I'm not a negative Nancy. I am so excited and energetic about what is coming. I may add more properties to my portfolio in the next year and a half than I have in the last four or five years combined. It's because I prepared. It's because I know good times never last. I also know bad times never last. You would need to A, survive the bad time so you can thrive in the bad time. People that follow and do the work in one rental at a time, you all are going to kick some ass in this next cycle because we only do great deals. We don't care what the interest rate is. We only do great deals. The interest rate's just cost of capital. You change one variable on your spreadsheet and you go. So if you want to call me a negative Nancy, my guess is you made a bad move and you're about to lose some money. Sorry, not my problem. Uh, I'm not negative at all. I am a most positive person I know, but I'm also a realist. The market that's in front of us is going to suck. And it's going to suck for lots of people. Not for me. I'll be okay. And then I will thrive because I was prepared and ready to rock and roll. I love it. I love it. You heard it here, folks. So one thing, too, that we talk a lot about in you know, this whole thing is that knowing it's not negative or positive. It just is. And if you know and you have you know, the dashboard and you can see that things are changing, which we've been talking about for months and months and months and months, Michael has been laying this out. Hey, we're going to see a housing slowdown. We're going to see a housing slowdown. We're going to see interest rates move. All of these point by point, week by week, we've been calling it ahead. So the key is to use the information and anticipate. So Michael, thank you for all that you share, all that you do. I love it. I just want to share with the audience here real quick. I'm screen sharing that obviously follow Michael on YouTube, One Rental at a Time. Also his course, if you go to oh. onerentalatatime.com, he's got an amazing course. And I've got to say that I am a member, a paid member of his course. Mm -hmm. I love the course. Um, I want to say that even what's great is that today um, I'm recording content as bonus material to share with the audience. Michael asked me and, hey, you know, we Michael gives so much that I'm excited and I'm honored and privileged to be able to share a little bit about what we're doing with pre foreclosure. So I love it, Michael. Survive and thrive, 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 thrive. I love it. Thank you for all that you share. Have a great weekend, my friend. Thank you, buddy.